I'm making this uh, video quickly on the um, Tascam MTS-1000 Midiizer um, because I saw some other videos on YouTube but uh, they all seem to be using the uh, serial interface uh, that Tascam designed to go from the Midiizer to uh, the um, various tape drives. Um, some of Tascam's drives and frankly drives from other manufacturers can also be used with the uh, Midiizer even though they don't have the uh, serial interface. If they have a parallel interface for remote control, um, you can interface to that through the IF-1000, which is what I'm using right now. And that's a um, parallel to serial and back again converter that um, Tascam also designed to go with the uh, Tascam Midiizer. I'll show the connections in a minute, but um, basically the Midiizer was designed to uh, synchronize two tape drives or to uh, uh, read and write uh, MIDI commands on those uh, tapes as well um, if composing a mixed uh, composition of live play and um, MIDI uh, sync music. Um, <clears throat> the way um, the MIDIizer works, you um, stripe both tapes um, with a SMPTE time code. I've selected 30 frames NDF, which means not drop frame. Um, to um, stripe on track 8 of both of these um, tapes. Tascam recommends track 8 so that you don't get uh, much chance of bleed through to the other uh, tracks um, with the SMPTE time code. Um, and then after you've striped the tapes, which I've already done, the midiizer will do the striping. You set it up and it goes until the tape runs from one end to the other. And then uh, after the time code is striped on there, the midiizer, any time it's turned off or either drive is turned on and off, it needs to relearn what it's connected to. And that's a very quick process. You set into um, the command lineup, the uh, setup command, hit enter, and um, the two drives will take off, um, educating the midiizer as to uh, where they are in their own respective time codes. The midiizer will store that information. You can see the 30 up here is uh, lit and that indicates the 30 frames per second that we're using. And um, it'll tell me in about 30 seconds uh, when it's done that it has learned, uh, you know, what it needs to learn about the, um, the two drives. And the tape that's on them obviously with the time codes. When it stops, we will put the um, synchro mode into chase and um, the two drives will um, be um, at the uh, same theoretical time code point. From there you can issue it other commands uh, for recording and playback. So it should uh, be through s shortly here. I've got these connected up, by the way. The um, TSR-8 on the left is a 8-track uh, uh, half-inch tape drive that um, is used widely for uh, home recording and home studio use. The drive on the right is a bit more professional in nature. It's a, uh, it has uh, balanced outputs. It's a Tascam 58OB, which has balanced outputs and a parallel remote control interface for a full auto locator. And, um, that drive uh, was made before the serial interface was designed, so uh, you need to talk to it through the IF-1000. I made a serial cable to go from the Tascam Midiizer to the TSR-8, and I made a parallel cable to go from the IF-1000 to the Tascam 58. Um, and I did that using uh, the pinouts and schematics and so forth that Tascam has provided in there. Usually Tascam's documentation is excellent, so uh, I used that uh, to uh, reverse engineer the cables. Uh, I had the uh, cable from the midiizer, the parallel cable, to the IF-1000. Uh, that's a ribbon cable and I'm glad I didn't have to make that because the uh, connectors for that would have probably been a little bit more difficult to um, find and, and utilize. Um, <clears throat> now that we've completed setup, hit escape to clear the uh, setup command. I put the drives into chase and um, the uh, TSR-8 on the left is going to spool to uh, get to the same uh, command point. 
which uh, the master shows at 1 hour, 3 minutes, 50 seconds, and frame 23, because at 30 frames per second, you can literally select which frame you want these things to uh, engage at. Um, the slave drive is at 1 hour, 3 seconds, or 1 hour, 3 minutes, 53 seconds. So they're about 3 seconds apart right now, um, which is uh, as close as you're going to get with the um, uh, servo mechanisms until you actually uh, sync them up. So when I hit play on the master, the master will start and um, now the uh, slave will start. You can see it's attempting here to uh, um, lock up. Now I've got lock. All right, and that's a characteristic of the um, individual servos on the drives. Once they're locked up, now you can uh, uh, issue uh, recording commands uh, to the drives. Um, through the locate mode, I can uh, store a queue, I can recall a queue, I can auto play, auto record, and I can set in pre and post roll uh, uh, locations if I'm going to, uh, re you know, fly in a uh, track or something like that, or uh, overdub or do whatever I want to do, I can put the uh, particular drive uh, track or tracks into the record mode and then I can, uh, using these uh, auto-locate commands, I can um, cause them to record at a particular um, uh, uh, location on the tape, physical location, in hours, minutes, and seconds, and frames, or I can um, actually have it locate based on a MIDI uh, location, a beat location. There's a lot of different um, uh, precision uh, locate modes that um, I can use to uh, to do um, recording when the drives are synchronized. Over here, I can also program in, a, program in an offset, and the offset can be either positive or negative. So the slave drive can be so many frames, so many seconds, so many whatever um, ahead or behind the um, master drive, if I so desire. Uh, so there's a lot of capability here in terms of being able to um, use uh, both MIDI and um, analog recording techniques to the two drives. Um, I'll disconnect this now. <coughs> this gives you a little bit better view of the um, MIDIizer itself with the um, uh, time code that's um, stored. <clears throat> um, these are some of the uh, prints. This is a copy of the TASCAM 58 interface that um, I uh, made to um, find the uh, methodologies for locating the um, play and record and stop and start commands, etc. Uh, the MIDIizer uh, diagrams themselves are very well done, and uh, you can see you've got uh, schematics for uh, pinouts and that sort of thing. <coughs> the back of the MIDIizer, I have uh, the master time code in and loop out connected back into the um, uh, mixing board. I have the slave type code in and slave out as well. Here's the slave connector, and this is the master uh, connector that ex connects to the uh, <coughs> the IF1000. So um, this connects the uh, MTS1000 to the IF1000 interface, and um, your servo selections are all done through dip switches on the back here. I can select a parallel master and a serial slave, uh, any combination down to a um, serial master and a parallel slave, and uh, any combination of those uh, two drives. The back of the um, the back of the uh, Tascam 58. You can see the connectors down here. Uh, it's an Elko type connector that connects the. Um, um, IF-1000 parallel interface, the one on the uh, the lower one in your image there, 
here is the IF-1000 itself. It's, um, there are no controls on the front, it's just a uh, rack-mounted um, interface uh, module with a uh, circuit card inside and uh, it does the parallel conversion uh, back to serial and uh, from serial to parallel as well. And the interface connector on the TSR-8 is the serial connector that you're looking at right there. I apologize for the limited access, but um, I'm up against the wall literally here. Um, so that's the, um, the nature of uh, the uh, MTS-1000, the manual for the MTS-1000 is uh, right here and it's fairly complete has an awful lot of information in it on um, not only connectivity and um, the functions and use of the commands but also how to read and write MIDI commands uh, using the uh, MTS-1000. So I uh, hope this adds to the information um, that's already on YouTube about um, the synchronizer. These uh, devices and drives are all obsolete, of course. They were all made in the uh, 1980s and early 90s. But uh, there's a lot of fans of analog recording still out there, and I'm one of them. Um, <clears throat> I use Pro Tools for um, digital recording and editing. I wouldn't uh, try and edit anymore on magnetic tape. But um, the uh, original recording sounds pretty good when you're using uh, a decent um, uh, tape drive and uh, equipment. So um, a lot of folks still like to use the uh, analog tape for uh, the original input of the recording. Uh, that's about all I have to say. I'll sign off now.